What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today I am excited to bring you the annual 2023 drug tier list. This has been a tradition on this channel for quite a few years now and this year I have very, very different takes. I hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do and the new summer merch is available right now so head over to Goblin420.com and get your hands on some of the new merch. The hoodies and shirts are now higher quality than ever before, and we also have tank tops for the first time. So head over to Goblin420.com and check out the new merch today. Some lucky orders will get a personal audio thank you from me via email. So if you do buy some merch, pardon me, make sure you check your email for a little message from me. Not every order will get it, but I try to do them every now and then. Make it a little special. Without further ado... Let's dive right into it. Now, before we start ranking anything, it's only appropriate for me to run you through everything that we'll be discussing today. If you look on the screen, there's some drugs that you might know of that are missing. And in particular, there's one drug that has always been on this list that is no longer here. And that is Spice, also known as K2 or Scooby Snacks or whatever you want to call it. The reason that that has been removed from this year's tier list is because of the rise of Delta 8 and other legal hemp products, essentially making K2 and spice and all that shit completely obsolete. So there's no reason to rank it anymore because it was always terrible and it was always only smoked by either A, people in prison, or B, people that were really desperate and might probably belong in prison. So let's go through the list of things that are on the list. Starting off, we have concentrates. It's important to separate that from flour. Then we also have edibles. Those are the weed, the separate subcategories of weed. Every other drug is broken up into a general category. We have cocaine, DMT, Xanax, and other benzos, crack, opiates I have created a whole category for because if we named every opiate that I could go into a Walgreens and get, I'd probably be here for six hours. Altnoids such as Delta 8, HHC, THCO, THCP, all of the current legal THC derivative products, heroin, DXM, ketamine, meth, shrooms, MDMA, LSD, and that's the list, ladies and gents. We're also leaving off research chemicals and most other synthetic variants of drugs because once again, if we named all those, I'd probably be here until my dick stopped working. So I think it's only fair to start out with something that also makes my penis stop working. Let's talk about cocaine. Now listen... I have the same problem with Adderall, okay? It makes my wiener stop working. It just, it doesn't really work out for me. Uh, Adderall is a substance that, you know, I would put it on this list, but let's be real here, dude. You take it during finals and it's baby math, you know? So you could pretty much just group it in the math category. But cocaine here, oh boy. This is a drug that I used to do a lot, and this is a drug that I have an extreme love-hate relationship with, because I would always think that I would get so much done when I was geeked up. I thought I was Superman, the most productive man in the world, and in reality, all I would do is play video games, watch documentaries about conspiracy theories, and maybe masturbate, and that's pretty much how my entire evening went every time I did cocaine. That's if I wasn't out at a degenerate friend's house, and then we would just sit there and play video games and do coke all day, and I thought I was so productive because I managed to fit $150 up my nose. With that being said, cocaine does feel nice, but it doesn't last very long and it's an extremely expensive habit. It's also a very, very addictive drug. People aren't joking when they say it's really easy to get hooked on this shit because it is. It doesn't last very long and I'd be lying if I said it didn't feel good. But I can't put it in S because it has a lot of flaws. I can't put it in A because it's fucking horrible for you. It's very bad for your heart and your nose or however you're ingesting it. And I don't really want to even put it in B minus or B plus or A minus. It belongs in a solid B tier. You know... I have some love for cocaine deep down in my heart. As much as I hate it, I also love it. But my heart doesn't and the rest of my body doesn't. My barber has a really fucked up nose from doing a lot of cocaine. I'm not saying that in an offensive way to him. I'm saying it because it'll make your shit collapse. Cocaine is in the B tier. Next up, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, we got some spicy stuff. Let's talk about meth. Now listen. 
For a long time, I only knew very few people that smoked meth, and then I moved further into central Illinois, and I met a whole lot more people that smoked meth. You know, one time I actually dated a girl that smoked meth. Meth is not a fun substance, and it's not something that I've ever consumed on purpose, but with how many sketchy molly caps and flats I've taken, I probably have done meth at one point or another. On top of that, Adderall is very, very similar, and it's very close to meth. Adderall Adderall could essentially be called legal meth if you really want to get down to it. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly the same, and if you want to get scientific, you can argue the differences, but my god, it's the closest thing we got. Meth is not very high on this tier list for me. Everyone I've met that smoked meth was just genuinely an asshole. I don't know what it is. Maybe I have a bit of a bias, but tweakers... Meth tweakers in particular are usually not a fun time to be around. I, I, had, I had a roommate in a high school, or not in high school, pardon me, in rehab. I'm fucking faded, dude. I took two shots and like a, quite a few bongers before I started this. So pardon me if I'm messing up here. But I had a roommate in rehab who was a meth addict. And he would tell me some of the craziest stories. And the reason that he ended up in rehab is because he got arrested he, walking down the street naked for like, he said he was up for a week apparently and he was just tripping out the town. He was an interesting guy, but I'm going to put meth in E tier. It's not quite F tier. I think there's other drugs that are F tier on this list, but meth is not quite one of them. All right, next up on this list, we're going to talk about a drug that I really, really had a fun time with back in the day. Listen, Xanax feels fantastic, okay? Everyone used to talk about how good Quaaludes felt, and unfortunately, I'm too young for those, but Xanax is the best damn thing we got. That's the problem with it. They feel amazing because they make you feel mentally disabled. I'm not kidding when I say your IQ probably gets chopped in half the moment you pop a bar down your throat. These things are ridiculous. They feel so wonderful. You forget about every problem you've ever had. But the way that I used to fiend for these things is like no other. I remember one time I went into the garage at my dad's house and grabbed every tool I could find. I grabbed hammers. I grabbed saws. And I went to the pawn shop with my friend that is girlfriend and at the time I was 17 so she had to take all the tools in and pawn them for me she came back out with like $15 and she brought most of the tools back but they bought a good amount of them for absolute dirt money but I was the happiest man alive and I used to do shit like that routinely I would finesse people during my Xanax phase for small amounts of money $10 I could name multiple times where I screwed someone out of just a 10 bomb just so I could go get a couple bars and forget about the rest of the day. These things taste awful, by the way. I have never in my life had a worse tasting substance than Xanax. I genuinely hate these from the bottom of my heart, but once again, I'd be lying to you if I said this shit didn't feel amazing. Xanax belongs in the E tier because getting off of them is also very, very difficult. I mean, I've known people who had seizures, seizures, pardon me, because they quit taking Xans. Granted, these guys were taking like eight fucking bars a day, but still, they're very addictive. Why? What's going on here? Why is this stuck on the screen? You guys, you guys see that? What the fuck's going on here? What the fuck are these lines doing? All right, whatever. You know what? Everyone just pretend they're not there. Who gives a fuck? Okay, next up. Oh, baby. All right, let's talk about crack. Listen, I smoked crack one time in my life, ladies and gents, okay? I was 17 years old. It was a Tuesday evening after school, and I'll never forget this day for the rest of my life. If I have children, I'm going to tell them the crack story the day that their fucking balls drop. Or if they're a girl, I don't know, the equivalent of that. But listen... The crack is something that, deep down, I don't think I regret it. It's not something that I'm dying to do again. It didn't even feel very good, honestly. It kind of just made me feel pissed off and irritated for like 2 minutes and 30 seconds, and then I was back to normal. I mean, it was not something that I wanted to do again, but... The reason that the crack I did was probably not the best experience is because we made the shit. I have a video about this, but to sum it up, essentially, we had some coke, we went on Google and found a crack recipe and made it with a lighter, a spoon, and some stirring in a freezer, and we did our goddamn best, and I mean, hey, we smoked it out of tinfoil, we did what we had to do. Crack is, is a strange one. It's something that I think nobody should ever do. It's something that is probably the most 
worthless drug on this list, out of everything on the screen right now, this is the one that makes, you know, just no sense to try ever, you know? Uh, realistically, I get why people are addicted to it. This shit lasts for two fucking minutes, dude. I mean, if you're hooked on crack, you're going to be fiending every 60 seconds. I get why crackhead is a term, but it's not a drug that's worth trying. And for that, we're going to put it down in the F tier. That's right. That's right. Now, listen, later in my life, if I was laying in a hospital bed right now and the doctor came out to me and he said to me, he said, Goblin, you have AIDS, cancer, cancer, AIDS. What well, combine those two things? If he came out and said I had that, well, I'll be damned. I'd probably smoke crack again. But for now, I'm good on that. All right. Next up. Ooh, we got some interesting shit. Let's talk about DXM. Now, I just have a picture of Delsim here, but DXM, for those of you who don't know, is the active ingredient in cough medicines, and it is the way that people get high from these cough medicines. The reason I put a picture of Delsim on here is because it is one of the only over-the-counter cough medicines that you can get that does not have, or actually, I don't even think it's over-the-counter. I think you just go grab that shit, but either way, um, it's one of the only commonly available cough meds you can get that doesn't have a lot of the other dangerous ingredients ingredients in it. So for those of you guys out there watching this video, if you're trying to take DXM and RoboTrip and you go out there and you get NyQuil, you get Tylenol, you're getting something that's very bad for you and very dangerous. You should look into something where DXM is the only active ingredient. Delsim in particular is spooky because it's got extended release DXM in it, which that shit lasts forever. But listen, if you're broke if you're at the bottom of the barrel, listen, straight up, if you're experiencing poverty, DXM is the drug for you. Let's not beat around the bush. This is not a drug that any grown adult does. This is a drug that teenagers and people who just go to steal do, right? I mean, you could go to the grocery store and steal this shit right now, you know? It, it's a small box. It's easy. You get 10 boxes of it, go home and forget about it, right? Teenagers and, and you know, absolute desperate degenerates So the only people doing DXM, all right? Maybe there's an exception out there. Maybe there's like the, I'm going to get the DXM wizard in the comments. He's going to be like, Goblin, I have banished you in my DXM realm. You can never come to my plateau. And he's going to just, just curse me in the comments. But listen, this is something I haven't gotten high on in fucking years, man. I haven't done this shit. I used to pop triple C's, drink Delsim, do all that shit in high school. I haven't done this since I dropped out, since I was 17 or 18. And the reason being, there's just better shit to do with your time. Grow the fuck up and do some cocaine, dude. I mean, grow up and take some acid. If you, if you want to trip, you know, people sometimes compare DXM to an acid trip, and I would say that it's maybe comparable to something between a shroom and an acid trip, but that's only in really high doses, and it's not a fun trip. It's not a trip that you're going to be like, wow, that's so fun. No, you're going to be having an awful time. Benadryl's not on this list because I've never done it and I don't want to talk about it, all right? And listen, if you want to see the shadow people, go take some goddamn Benadryl, okay? Next up, oh baby, oh baby, let's talk about ketamine. This is a horse tranquilizer, all right? Uh, it's a general tranquilizer used in vets, but I mean, it, commonly people refer to it as a horse tranquilizer. I've done a lot of K in my life. This shit is awesome, dude, okay? I can't lie. K-holing is pretty terrifying, so you kind of got to know your limits, but there's some freaks out there that like that shit. Probably some of you guys watching this video right now could potentially be on your way to a K-hole. Smooth sailing, my friend. That's all I've got to say to you. But ketamine is something that I used to be really, really into. I went through multiple phases of doing K. As recently as about two years ago, I was doing quite a lot of it. I mean, this, oh, it's a fun time. The best way I can think of describing ketamine is it's kind of like a crossfade in low doses where if you only take a bump of it, you're going to feel like you're a little drunk and you're a little stoned and maybe there's a little extra punch to it, a little something extra going through your veins. But in higher doses, you kind of just lose control of all of your motor functions. You're not really going to be walking too straight, if at all. You're not really going to feel your limbs. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a tranquilizer and it lives up to its goddamn name, but... I will say I got a soft spot for ketamine. It's not good for you at all. This is not necessarily a safe thing to do, but it's fucking fun. 
I can't lie. Now, I don't recommend ever trying anything on this list, but me personally, I had a good time with this, and I think it belongs next to cocaine. I mean, dude, I used to just sit at homies' houses, and we would just do bumps of K all night, and we would just go zombie mode. Getting K-hold was never my favorite thing in the world. In fact, it was far from it, but my God, it, it felt kind of good. It felt kind of good. Next up, all right, let's talk about one that's not so great. Let's talk about heroin. Now, heroin is something that I'm not a fan of, okay? I've never done heroin personally, but I have a lot of friends who have. And the reason it's on this list is because I know a lot of people who have done it. And I I think, you know, it's a mainstream and kind of well-known enough drug where it should be on this list. Random research chemicals we're not going to put on here. But heroin, I mean, my God, you know, come on, we got to put it on here. But listen. Heroin's an automatic F tier, right next to crack. Uh, Heroin, there's no denying, this is, in terms of effects, probably the best drug on this list, realistically. I mean, it, from what I've been told, feels absolutely incredible, but that's the problem with it, because it is so addictive. It's so terrible for you. If you want to speed run ruining your life, if you just want to start the stopwatch and be like, yo... I'm going to fuck my shit up. Hey, this is the way, right? Right here, right here. Uh, My God, I, I have no further comment about heroin, but I think it was important to have on the list. We're getting to the fun stuff now. Let's talk about acid. Ooh, oh, baby. Listen, okay? When I was younger... I was a huge, huge acid guy. If you asked me this exact same tearless kind of question maybe five years ago, acid would have been on top of this entire list. Acid would have won the goddamn award. It would have won the Grammys, the Oscars, whatever you consider this, all right? I need a sip of water before I talk about acid in depth here. Oh my, get your hydration ready, everyone watching this video. I have a beautifully cold water right now. Oh, Oh my God, I love hydration. Okay, listen. The last time I did acid was March of last year. So it was about 14, 14 and a half months ago, give or take. I did not have a good time whatsoever. Um, And prior to that, I hadn't really been doing acid routinely. It, It wasn't something that I was taking regularly. I had done it a few times the summer prior to that, but it, it, you know, wasn't something that I was taking regularly. I took it in the fall prior to that too, but you know, just wasn't something that I was doing a lot like I used to when I was younger. And as I've gotten older, my love for this substance has kind of faded. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just personally, it it doesn't hit the same anymore. I used to trip and just have a blast and have fun. And now whenever I trip, I feel like I just end up getting in my head. You know, now whenever I trip, it's like too much. I I also feel like I don't have enough time to commit a whole 10 hours, 12 hours to tripping. Acid's the kind of thing where you have to sacrifice your entire day. You know, you got to realize like, hey, if I pop this tab, I'm not getting anything done, you know. And when I was younger, that was perfect. I loved that concept. But now that I'm older, it's not as manageable. It's not something that I can do as much. And it's not something that I really feel myself wanting to do as much. I used to love it a lot, but I replaced it with something else on this list. And for that reason, we're going to put acid in A tier. It deserves its flowers. And I've had a lot of fun memories on acid. Don't get me wrong. Some of my favorite memories with my friends back in high school were just doing the dumbest shit while we were tripping out of our minds. And the video Visual effects of acid are like no other substance. They're truly incredible. If, you know, you you guys have ever done it before, you might know, you know, sometimes just being outside and something as simple as a field or under a tree can be one of the most beautiful things ever when you're tripping. It can seriously look crazy, in particular on acid. Now that we've covered acid, I feel it's important to also talk about shrooms. Now, ladies and gents, Shrooms are something that when I was younger, I had a bad experience on, and it kind of turned me off of them for a bit. Uh, My first time doing shrooms, I ate about four grams, give or take, and it was too much. I didn't like it, and at that time, I had already done acid before, but the shrooms just hit me differently. Also, we didn't really have anything to do. I basically ate four grams of shrooms and then got in a car and rode around in the back seat for like three hours, you know? It was really, really not a good time. 
So for a long time, I didn't really take any shrooms. I wasn't interested in trying them until the past couple years. Now, I haven't actually tripped since 420, so it's been a little over a month for me, actually, if I remember correctly. But I've been taking a good amount of shrooms these past couple of years. At one point, I was microdosing every day. I mean, I really, really have a lot of love for shrooms now. I think they're a very manageable psychedelic experience. I think they're really comforting, you know? I, I feel really good whenever I just take a small dose, maybe even, not even two grams, you know? Take like a gram and a half, and I'm just vibing hard as fuck. You know, it doesn't even have to be a full trip. Shrooms are something where it, you don't have to commit your entire day to it. You know, realistically, I can finish whatever I'm doing with my day, get home at like 6 p.m. and take some shrooms and I'll be chilling by like 11. I'll, feel, I'll be back to normal by midnight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shrooms are, are wonderful. They're beautiful. I, I love them. I love tripping on shrooms. It's an amazing social experience. And I feel that they're much more functional. I think when I'm on the shrooms, I can still be outdoors and and function and do stuff but sometimes when I'm on the acid and I'm outdoors I just can't do it man shrooms have really become my my new personal love and as of lately I've been California sober I, I've you know for the past year or two now I've only really been doing shrooms and smoking my weed and drinking a little bit here and there so I've been chilling pretty hard but shrooms have been a core part of that I got a lot of love for this substance and we're putting shrooms up there in S. Hey. Round of applause for shrooms. All right, next up, let's talk about some serious shit. We're going to talk about weed. Let's talk about edibles, okay? Listen, I have a really high edible tolerance. Some of you guys may have watched my live streams before, uh, twitch.tv slash gbln420. And if you guys have watched my streams before, both on YouTube and Twitch, you might remember the time where I ate five grams of RSO, which was about 4,200 milligrams, give or take. It might have been more. I don't remember the exact amount, but it was around that amount, uh, give or take. Either way, it was too much, and I was high for like two days. I have a very high tolerance, and I require at least, I'd say, 500 milligrams to really get anywhere, you know? Because of that, I don't take edibles very often. They're expensive, dude. If I wanted to get enough edibles to get me high as fuck and chilling for the night, I'm gonna have to spend a lot of money most of the time, and I'm just not about that. RSO is a better deal, but that shit's kind of nasty, and I don't really want to pour it into capsules every time, but they do hit, and, you know, I, I got a lot of love for really intense edible highs. I think edibles are a fun fucking time, you know? When you got nothing to do, it's a lazy day, you're just playing some games and taking some bong rips, hell fucking yeah, dude, pop some edibles, get to chilling. For me, though, edibles are not an S tier whatsoever. I think edibles are maybe a low A tier or potential high B tier. For that, I'm going to put it in between A and B. We're going to put it kind of kind of sticking out of both of them. It's a B plus or an A minus, however you want to view it. The first half and half rating of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I just, I don't take edibles all that much. Now, all right, oh, oh, we got some fun shit left. Let's talk about opiates. Then we'll get to something cannabis related again. Now, Opiates, for those of you guys who watch my videos, you probably know that it's not a category I've been super big on for really ever, you know? It, it's something that, yeah, I've done a lot of them. I've done my perks, I've done my oxys, I've done my hydros, I've done my narcos, I've done my morphine pills out of desperation, even though those bitches are honestly weak, you know? You'd always think, you're like, oh, morphine, that's probably so strong. And that's what I thought when I was younger, but it's actually very weak in the in the scope of opiates. It, it really don't hit like that, but... Opiates are not a preferred category of mine, and they really do get people addicted quick. You know, opiates ruin normal people's lives. That's the problem. Not only are they a shit thing to be addicted to, but when people get prescribed these and they don't, you know, they haven't been a drug addict before, they can get addicted to these shits, you know? I mean, it's not the most uncommon thing ever. It's fairly common, you know? And and these opiates are not good. Uh, I'm not factoring in any of the, you know, fakes or the fentanyl presses that are going around. Every drug on this category, I'm only, you know, considering the real form of it. Because I don't think it's fair to rank a drug based off any, you know, fakes or the amount of fakes around. But... With that being said, I think it is important to say in this video that opiates are one of the most, if not the most, faked p 
pill on the streets. In particular, you know, your perks, your oxys, anything like that. Oxys are almost always going to be fent because oxys are extremely rare, dude. They always have been. Even back when I was in high school, oxys were rare, dude. Like, they're tax, my guy. They're tax. You know, they've always been the most expensive. Uh, but with that being said... Opiates are C-tier because they do feel fucking wonderful. I remember one time I got stabbed in the knee with a screwdriver, and I made a video about that as well, and when I was in the hospital, I got real geeked up. They put some IV fentanyl in me, which wasn't really the same thing as the shit you're popping in fake pills or doing in fake coke or whatever, but it, it, it had me feeling amazing. And when I came down from all that the following day, and they, they were about to release me, they sent the doctor in, and the doctor originally told me he was going to give me some narcos and I got excited about it and they yoinked that prescription away really quickly and I was really sad about it because I was like, damn, I'm super down to get geeked. I couldn't even walk, bro. I was like a grandma. I had to sit in the shower. I, like, I couldn't even stand all the way in the shower. I had a chair in that bitch, dude. It was fucked. All right, either way, next up, let's talk about flour. Now, the classic, the cannabis the weed flower, the Zaza, whatever you want to call it, ladies and gents. Flower is the classic way to smoke. Flower is functional. It's something that I can smoke all day. It's something that, you know, I can rip at any time and still be functional for the rest of the day, still be on point, not feel like a zombie. And there's so much variety. There's variety with looks, with smells, with flavors, with everything about it. There's just so much variety with flower. But... I do have to say that it's not my absolute favorite way to get stoned. It's not. It's S, but it's not top of S. Now, you know, for a long time, flour, I only ever really smoked blunts. And then I went through a period where I would only really take dabs. And only lately have I kind of started doing both at the same time. I feel like I don't even know why exactly I would do it, but I would just go through phases where either I'm smoking flour all day and I'm not taking any sort of dabs, or I would just be taking dabs all day. I'd be ripping my Puffco or getting the banger ready every fucking 20, 30 minutes. Well, not that frequently, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I was, I was, you know, for a long time, really only doing one at a time. And then eventually recently I started doing both and both is the way to go. If it's earlier than 6 PM, I'm taking bong rips. If it's later than 6 PM, I'm smoking rosin. And that segues us into the ranking for concentrates, which is also a well-deserved S just a bit higher than flour. Now listen, I know that this shit knocks you out. I know that whenever you're smoking some live resin, some rosin, even some shitty distillate, listen, stop smoking disty, okay? It's 2023. Grow the fuck up, you coward. Why don't you start smoking some real shit? Even live resin is better than distillate. There's nothing wrong with live resin, by the way, you know? Obviously, smoking some rosin is the best way to do it. But listen, concentrates as a whole are wonderful. I also would technically consider just normal old school hash, you know, that that good old hashish, also as a concentrate. Um, there's just, it just hits different. It just makes me feel stupid. And you know, a lot of people don't like that part of getting stoned, but I do. I get stoned with the sole objective of losing some brain cells for the time being. And that's why concentrates are the second highest thing on the list right now behind Shroom. Oh, we got some fun shit now. We got some fun shit now. All right. Let's talk about all these new Delta 8 and alternate, you know, cannabinoid hemp products that have started popping up. These have really progressed a lot since the last drug tier list that we made. There have been so many new things hitting the market and new developments and new derivatives that have been coming up. It feels like every other week there's some new version of THC or Delta 8 or HHC or something that is just smoking different. One that I tried recently that has definitely been on my mind is THCP. That shit smokes, dude. It's kind of dangerous. It lasts too long. I was talking talking with the owner of one of the companies who makes a lot of THCP products recently, and essentially he told me that the reason it lasts so long is because the half-life of it is like 60 hours or some shit. I don't know exactly how scientifically accurate that is, but I trust the guy who manufactures them more than I trust my own brain about that. But... These have progressed a lot. I think if you're someone who lives in a place where these are, you know, standard weed products are illegal, I think these are genuinely not a bad alternative. Now, they still have a long way to go, and obviously these will, you know, any hemp or Delta 8 product will never, 
ever be better than just smoking regular weed. It just simply won't be. But they've made a lot of promising steps in the right direction. This whole industry has in the past couple years. The concerning thing is this shit's probably going to be banned pretty soon. If I remember correctly, the farm bill is up for the, I think re review either this year or next year. I don't exactly remember which year, but I think it's coming soon where that bill is being re reviewed. And I'm pretty confident they're going to patch the loophole that is allowing all of these things to be legally shipped to pretty much much any state. Some states have restrictions on certain things, but for the most part, these products are legal across most of the United States. You know, I don't know about the international laws. I mean, if I remember, I think Japan has like CBD and shit. I wonder if they have Delta 8. Do we have any Japanese people watching? Drop a comment, dude. I want to know. Either way, with that being said, I think it's fair to put Delta 8 products and the the general hemp product industry as a whole in the B tier. And the reason that it's in B and not higher up is this. There's not enough consistency in it, right? I think THC derivatives are a really exciting thing. I think there's the potential to get high as fuck off some of these things. But the problem is... People don't really have any sort of quality control in this industry yet. There's a lot of bad actors in the scene that put out absolute bullshit products, you know? There's there's some really, really fucking bad Delta 8 and, you know, THCO and THCP and all that shit type of products on the market. So it's important to do your due diligence and find the good guys out there. Whenever you go to a dispensary, you could argue the same thing, but at the end of the day, you know that the product on a dispensary shelf, uh, dispensary shelf, pardon me, for the most part is going to be safe. It's been tested and all of that. With a lot of these smaller companies that you go to a smoke shop and you see their Delta 8 vapes or whatever, you don't really know what the fuck you're getting your hands on. So that's why it's in lower B tier. I think as time goes on, these things could maybe move up to A tier. But for now, this is where they belong. Next up, MDMA. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Listen, I used to take a lot of Molly, and it feels fucking amazing. If you've ever heard a terrible song and wanted it to sound better, take some Molly. I swear to God, I could probably make Sweet Love with Ice JJ Fish going in the background just off a pointer of some Molly. That's all I fucking need. This shit feels amazing. Now, the downside of it is the day you wake up after taking this shit, you're literally going to want to kill yourself. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not kidding. You're going to wake up, and the first thing on your mind is going to be the fastest way to end your misery and it feels really fucking terrible it's bad it's an emotional hangover it's not like you feel super groggy and out of it and sometimes you do if you rolled a lot and you rolled really hard and you don't sleep well but you really feel emotionally drained the day after on top of that mdma is very neurotoxic it's not good for you it is not something that you should be taking every day but the plus side is for the most part it's not extremely addictive It's not something that you're going to be like itching to do every day, such as heroin, meth, cocaine. It's something that you can enjoy a lot and be addicted to the feeling it gives you, but not necessarily have those like physical addiction urges like I need to do this shit. Some people do, though. I mean, I went to rehab with a kid who was addicted to Molly and that guy stuttered so bad he couldn't form a sentence. But... MDMA, it feels good. I used to mix it in with cocaine, which is extremely stupid to do and completely fried my dopamine receptors. Now the only thing that makes me happy is gambling. But with that being said, we're going to put MDMA, I'd say B tier. It's honestly pretty decent. It really is. And last but not least on the list. Oh, oh, ladies and gents, ladies and gents, I'm proud to rank DMT. Now, this is something that for a long time I was waiting to do, and I still am, but I think I'm going to do it when I'm like 30. I I think I've like settled on it. I've been thinking about it quite a lot, dude, and I've been talking to some of my friends who have been doing it, I've been reading shit online, and I kind of want to go for it. I kind of want to go for it. Honest to God, DMT would be a good fucking time. I want to experience that. For those of you guys who aren't aware, DMT is a very crazy out-of-body psychedelic experience. It is something that is unlike anything else really on this list or really any other drug in the world in general. DMT is crazy. And 
One of the wild things about it is DMT is released in your brain when you die. Uh, it is apparently stored in, I, I don't know exactly where, it's either in your brain or it's in your spine or something, but there's a lot of DMT <clears throat> inside of you. Dude, I just almost choked on my own saliva. All right, I've recovered. But yeah, either way, apparently, whenever you're about to die, there's a bunch of DMT in your brain. And maybe you're just tripping dick, you know? Maybe everyone who says that they just saw Jesus when they were about to die or they had a near-death experience was just tripping absolute cock and balls. I don't know. But with that being said, DMT is something that, you know, it's different than every other substance on here. It's unlike your standard drug. It's not something that you can necessarily do on a regular basis. And it's not something that a lot of people really do regularly, you know, it's not like, oh, dude, got, to, got it off work, you know, I don't have to go to work tomorrow, dude, let's do some fucking DMT, man, like, <laughs> people are definitely gonna pick some other shit on this list for that kind of occasion, but it deserves respect for being so unique in its own right, and for being an absolutely insane, out-of-body psychedelic experience, and for that, we're putting it in the A tier. And that completes this year's 2023 drug tier list. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look, read it, and weep. Shrooms have come in first place, and heroin and crack are in dead last. Take a look at the list, read it, and weep. It's so beautiful this year. You know what else is beautiful? The new merch at Goblin420.com. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Enjoy. Enjoy the rest of the content on my channel. I love you. Thank you for being here. Drop a like. See you in the next one. I'm fucking, I'm not gonna lie, I'm faded. In between a few of these takes, I like paused and took some bong rips. I'm feeling so good right now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.